So the next example we're going to look at is the concept of tape loops. So obviously loops are a big part of modern music production, but these techniques were first developed in the studio using tapes. So when a sound is recorded on that and plays back, it will play back continuously and you can alter the playback speed, which will, as a result, alter the pitch of the sound being played back. So I mentioned before, a theme running through music concrete is the sound object. And what they meant by that is that once you recorded a sound on the tape, it was frozen in time and could be abstracted from its original source, particularly when it's played back in a loop. When you hear a sound in the real world, it's in the context of what's going on at that moment. When you take it, record it and place it in a loop, the more you hear it, the more it takes on a life on its own. And you can start to hear and pick out elements within the recording that may have not been obvious when you just heard it a single time. So what I'm going to do in this example here is that I have a bunch of loops that if I play them all together, sounds like a bit of a cacophony. What I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to each one and see if there's anything that could be derived as rhythmic information from within it that we can make a loop from. So I'll solo this first one here. It's a recording of church bells. So I went through all the loops and set up a looping point around what I thought something was interesting and shifted around the start markers so I didn't always start at the beginning of the loop. So I'm just going to give you a listen to some of what I've come up with. So this is the one, the bells. So at the end of the bells ringing, there was just the last bell. And then I kind of toured, I'm not sure where it came from, but. And then bring in some other sounds. This is was sound of a bike passing. And I've just put a bit of clip automation in there. So it just picks out a kind of whoosh within the sound so I'll put that and adjusted the warp marker to all to where the rhythm so the next sound along is a camera focusing so again in all of these sections I adjusted the loop they're all the kind of divisions of a bar or a bar long and when combined together they kind of create syncopation. So once I have that single sound I could copy that and do like a variation on it. Maybe I'd have it half as long. Obviously all these sounds would need to be processed further to make them kind of interesting. But the idea of what we're doing here is that we're using loops that have inherent rhythmic material within them that when combined together can create rhythmic material and syncopation that we wouldn't program and get the same results using any other method. Next then I have a kind of can, a tin can dropping. Again, I can make a copy of this one. Experiment with a shorter loop. I have a kind of toad over here of a chair bang and a pillow. I'm going to bring them in because they give a bit more kind of steady rhythm to the sound. Let me give me something more to kind of play off. So again, what we're also not doing here is splicing or editing together at the minute. That would, of course, be a process well used in music concrete techniques, where once you got a loop and recombining different parts of a loop, you might edit some sounds out.
legs, there's a sound of a car accelerating. So there's various things within here, but I'm going to use this kind of section here as kind of like a crescendo. So it's quite raw at the minute, but you got to kind of use your imagination with some processing. You definitely make that work or even possibly reverse it. Again, this was a longer section of a kind of a car kind of idling and it was rumbling a bit. So it's those two kind of rev stairs what I'm using and I'm halving the length of the loop. So by itself it's not much, but when you put it in with the other stuff, you get the interplay kind of happening. Let's make a copy of this, see what else we can do here. You can also make the loops divisions of the loop. So if this one is three beats long, when it's looping around, it'll give me different variations because it's going to be out of sync or out of phase with the other elements of the loops. And look at that acceleration. So I know just at the end of that, there's some sort of footsteps. Tape manipulation here by speeding things up and slowing things down. We'll put a break point in here and put this to repitch. It's equivalent of speeding our tape up and down. Or noise in the background there is getting pitch shifted. Bell at the beginning there, I could maybe put a break point in there and pitch the, the bell up. if I'm going to do anything like that so
So I hope you get the idea there in that the written material that's going to be generated is purely based on the material that you have. So often there can be trial and error, trying out different loops, listening carefully to the sounds, maybe filtering some sounds, EQing some sounds to enhance or bring out rhythmic elements that are contained within the samples more. Of course, we can use our very speed to alter the pitch of elements, pitching them up, pitching them down, making them more or less percussive, more subby, more high end, and using those elements to alter the timbre of the characteristics before then going further in to the modern processing techniques that we have available. So the last tape playback technique or effect that I'm going to talk about is wow and flutter. Wow and flutter can occur due to the miscalibration of the tape machine. Wow is a low frequency variation that happens in the sound, similar to the effect of when you're playing back a vinyl record where the center is not perfectly aligned and as a result you will get a pitch variation. Flutter is also a cyclical variation but it happens at a much higher frequency. To simulate these effects in Ableton we can use the frequency shifter. In Logic, you can use the ring modulation effect, where part of the effect, it has a frequency shifter. So as I said, wow and flutter are a similar type of effect, with wow modulation happening at a lower rate. So on this sound here, it's a recording of wind coming through a crack in a door. So I'll turn down the amount and turn on the effect. And usually with wow, it's quite a low rate. So I'll turn up the amount a lot, so I can hear the oscillation. So it's quite low there, and then I'll just dial back on the amount. And we'll get a subtle variation in the pitch. And this would usually occur due to the tape playback issues we're simulating in here with a frequency shifter. Flutter, again, it's the same. This happens at a higher frequency. So I put it up to a much higher rate there. And you often hear it as a modulation or wobble in the sound. So depending on the complexity of the sound, the effect can be subtle, but just adding a certain amount of modulation to the sound. This is often an effect used these days on something like a synthesizer part. So if I come over to our effect here, just playing the strings. Let's give it a bit of level. So I'll turn on my effect and I'll dial in some wow. So as mentioned, wow is often at a lower frequency. So I'll just dial it right back. So it's meant to be quite subtle. So it can be heard as a drifting or a wobbling of the pitch, depending on the rate that you use. Usually wow is at quite a low frequency. Or flutter is at higher frequency, something simulated something at around 5 kilohertz. And where wow is more of a cyclical pattern, sometimes flutter can appear more random. So this time I'm going to change the shape to use noise. So that the modulation that we're getting is a bit more random. So we can really hear it there and then I just dial it back. <laughs> 